Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at how to build a two-player Pong game using Python. This is a beginner-friendly tutorial that's perfect for anyone, whether you're just starting out or looking for a fun side quest project, then this one is for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. For this game, we'll be using the Pygame module. So if you don't have it installed, head on over to your terminal and type pip install Pygame and hit enter, and you'll have it in no time. We want to start off by importing the Pygame library. Like I said earlier, we'll be using it to build our Pong game. Next, when I say Pygame init, this initializes all the Pygame modules we need. It's like turning on the game engine. Then we're going to have two variables, width and height, and I'll set them to 600 by 400. This sets the size of our game window to 600 pixels wide and 400 pixels high. Next, we're going to have a variable called screen, and I'm going to set it to Pygame display set mode, and we call those width and height variables we just created. This creates the game window with the size we just defined. Now we're going to say Pygame display set caption simple pong. This sets the title of the game window to simple pong, which is the text in the top left corner of the game. You could have it to your name or something cooler if you're creative like that, but I'll leave it as it is. Next, we're going to create a variable and I'm going to call it white and I'm going to set it to 255, 255. And I have another variable called black and I have it to a triple zero. So these over here are color definitions. White and black are written in RGB format. RGB format are these numbers over here, these 225s and these triple zeros. Next, we're going to have a variable called paddle W and paddle height and I set it to 10 and 60. This sets the width and height of each paddle. Now we're going to create another variable and I'm going to call it left paddle and I'm going to set it to pi game rect 10 height divided by 2 minus paddle height divided by 2 paddle width and paddle height. This line creates the left paddle and is placed 10 pixels from the left edge and vertically centered. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it right paddle and we're going to set it to pi game rect width minus 20 height divided by 20 minus paddle height divided by 2 paddle width paddle height. Now this line over here creates the right paddle 20 pixels from the right edge and also vertically centered. Then we're going to create a variable called ball and we're going to set it to pi game rect width divided by 2 minus 7, height divided by 2 minus 7, 14 and 14. Over here we're creating the ball and placing it at the center of the screen. Next we'll create two variables called ball speed x and ball speed y and I set them to 4 and 4. This sets the ball speed in the y direction as well as the x direction. Now we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it pedal speed and I'll set it to 5. This sets how fast the pedal moves when the key is pressed. Then we're going to create a variable and I'm going to call it left score and I'll set it to zero. And we'll create another variable and I'm going to call it right score and I'm also going to set that to zero. These lines over here keep track of each player score for the player on the left and for the player on the right. Next, we're going to create a variable and I'm going to call it font and I'll set it to pi game font font. In this parentheses, we're going to have none 36. Over here, we're going to load the default font with a size of 36 to display the scores onto the screen. Then we're going to create a variable called run and I set it to true. This line over here is a flag and keeps our game loop running. Now I'm going to create a variable called clock and I set it to pi game time clock with an empty parenthesis. This line will be used to control the frame rate or you could also say the speed of the game. Now this is where the game loop begins, the part that will keep repeating itself until we quit the game. Keep in mind everything that will come over here will be indented, it will make sense soon. So we'll start off by saying while well, run and this is where the indentation will begin. In here, we're going to say clock takes 60. This line limits the game to 60 frames per second. Then we're going to say screen fill. In this parentheses, we're going to have black. This will fill the screen in the color black so we can draw everything fresh on each frame. Now we're going to say for event in pygame.get. This will go through all the events like keyboard presses or window closing. If event type equals pygame quit, run equals false. So if the close button is clicked, we stop the loop and exit the game. Next, we're going to move to the pedal controls. We're going to start off by creating a variable called keys and we're going to set them to pi game key get pressed. This checks which key is being held down. If key is pi game kw and left pedal dot top is greater than zero, left pedal y minus equals pedal speed. This moves the left pedal up when w is pressed. If pi game ks and left pedal bottom is less than height, Pedal Y plus equals pedal speed. This moves the left pedal down when the S key is pressed. If key pi game K up and right pedal top is greater than zero, right pedal minus equals pedal speed. This moves the right pedal up with the up arrow key. If key is pi game K down and right pedal bottom is less than right height, pedal minus equals pedal speed. This moves the right pedal down with the down arrow key. Now we're going to program the ball movements. So we're going to say ball X plus equals ball speed x, ball y plus equals ball speed y. 
This will move the ball by updating its x and y position. If ball top is greater or equal to 0 and ball bottom is less or equal to the height, ball speed y equals minus ball speed y. This will make the ball bounce off the top and bottom walls. Now we're going to code the ball and pedal collisions. So we're going to say if ball collide right left, pedal and ball speed x is less than 0, ball speed x equals minus ball speed x. This line checks if the ball hits the left pedal and then bounces it back. If collide right pedal and ball speed x is greater than 0, ball speed x minus ball speed x. This line checks if the ball hits the right pedal and then it also bounces it back. Now we're going to manage the scoring. We're going to say if ball left is less or equal to 0, right score plus equals 1. Then we're going to say ball center equals width divided by 2, height divided by 2. These lines check if the ball goes off to the left side, if so, the right player scores and the ball resets. If ball right is greater or equal to width left, score plus equals 1, ball center equals width divided by 2, height divided by 2. These lines basically do the same thing and they check if the ball has gone off on the right side, if so, the left player scores. Now we're going to move on to the lines that actually draw the game. So when I say pie game draw rect, screen white, pedal left, Pi game draw right screen, white right pedal. This draws both pedals on the screen in white. Pi game draw ellipse screen white ball. This line over here draws a little ball. Pi game draw a line screen white, width divided by 2, 0. This draws a center line to separate the two sides. Now we're going to code the part that draws the scores. To start off, we're going to have a variable called left text and I set it to font render string left score true white. And then when I have one more variable called right text, and I'll set it to font render string, write score true, white. So these lines render the current scores into images. Screen blitz left, width divided by 4 and 10. Screen blitz right, width times 3 divided by 4 and 10. These two lines over here draw the scores onto the screen. Then when I say pi game display flip, this updates the screen with everything we just drew. And finally, we're going to say pi game quit. This line closes everything properly when the game ends. And that's it, you have just built a simple two player pong game in Python using Pygame. Now let's go ahead and run the program. And there you go, you have a working pong game that you and someone can play. I've given you the perfect foundation to add more features like sound, difficulty levels, or even an AI opponent. And that's it for this one. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, then consider leaving a like and subscribing. Turn on post notifications to be the first new when I upload a new video. Also, I'm always looking to improve. If you have any constructive criticism or any questions or just want to say hi, then leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.